Hello and good afternoon. This is God Choice Ministries and I want to welcome you back to another week. And this is the continuation of the the power of the, the tongue series. So I just want to go in a quick prayer right before we begin. Father God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We pray over this word, Lord God. We pray that where two or three are gathered in your name, Lord, you said that you will be in the midst. Father, we declare and decree that no weapon form against us shall prosper, Father. Father, may you, O oh God, increase. Father God, increase in me, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, that you will forgive us of every sin right now and cleanse our hearts right now that we may be worthy of your word. O oh God, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And so I just want to welcome you back another week. We are here um, continuing the power of the tongue. And today I want to read Psalms 34 and 13. This is the New Living translation and it says keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies god has mandated us as christians and this is one of the laws of the bible he said to keep your lips keep your tongue sorry from evil and your lips from telling lies and so in order for you to be pleased with the holy god these is these are the commandments that he has taught us to always live by Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. And so I have a, a few verses that I'm going to just read out to you so you can see that how serious God is about, how serious God is about what we say, what we do, and how we will be judged according to how we use our mouth. Okay, so Psalms 34 and 13 says, Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. What is the meaning of evil? The meaning of evil is sinful and wicked. Anything that is sinful, anything that is wicked, anything that does not please God. The meaning of lies, to practice deceit, the action or practice of deceiving someone by concealing or misinterpreting the truth, right? So lies is the action or practice of deceiving someone by concealing or misrepresenting, sorry, the truth. And so when you go out and you tell something that is not of the truth, that's a lie. They call that a lie. Anything that is practice, and it's, it's practice in deception, it's not practice in truth. He said that's a lie. That is things we should not practice as Christians. We should not practice lies. Psalms 34 and 13, I like to reiterate it. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Amen? And so, let us go to Matthew 12, 36 to 37. The Bible says, and I tell you this. You must give an account on Judgment Day for every idle word you speak. Verse, verse 37, the words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. How serious is that? You know, we go by every day as Christians and we, 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 we think that we could say what we want. We could gossip. We could talk about others. We could um, say what type of jokes, funny jokes, fresh jokes, however, obscene jokes. But the Bible is telling you in Matthew, Matthew 12, 36 to 37, and I tell you this, you must give an account on Judgment Day for every idle word you speak, verse 37, the words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. What is an idle word? Something that is pointless, something that is not of value, nothing of value. Idle words are pointless words and nothing of value. So the Lord is saying to us, Every idle word you speak, he said, you shall give an account for it on Judgment Day. He said, the words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. And so we look at fornication, we look at adultery, we look at all these other things as sins. But this is something that we hardly look into. What about the sin of the tongue? What about what we are saying with the tongue? What about what we are using our mouths to do? Are we using our mouths to glorify God? Because guess what? This is serious. Matthew 12 and 36 is tell you. He said, I tell you the truth. I tell you this, sorry. You must give an account on Judgment Day. He said, for every idle word, not some of the words, not a piece of the word. He said, every idle word you speak. Verse 37, the words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. What is the meaning of acquit? Set you free. So if you keep your mouth uh, with, with, with good words of, of the scriptures, of, of talking good about people, like the Bible said, Paul said, whatsoever things are lovely, you think on those things. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are good report, you think on those things. Right? So the mind goes ahead with what the tongue will say. Whatever is in will come out. 
or quit, set free. He said, the words you say will either set you free or condemn you. What is the meaning of condemn? Condemn means to sentence, to punish. So in other words, the words you say will either set you free or the words you say will either sentence you to punishment. It's your choice. Make a choice today. Matthew 12, 36, 37. Go and read it for yourself. You'll find it. Okay, Ephesians 5 and 4. Ephesians 5 and 4 said, Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes. These are not for you. Instead, he said, let there be thankfulness to God. And so as a Christian, the Bible is warning us. Obscene stories. Sometimes we talk of these fresh jokes, these obscene stories, foolish talking, nothing would make sense. You know, talk about politics and, you know, and, and prime minister, um, the ex-prime minister, minister, and all these different things. And you talk about these rough jokes about, you know, how this person, this, and what they was doing, and how they were sinning, and all kinds of different things like that. Nothing that makes sense. The Bible is saying, obscene stories, foolish talk. And coarse jokes. He said, these are not for you. You who are believers who are watching, he said, these things are not for you. Your mouth should not have any obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes. Idle words, anything that is idle, anything that does not bring glory to God. These are not for you. He said, instead, let there be thankfulness to God. So you know what you're supposed to be doing with your lip? Every time you speak, you're supposed to have a word that could edify the kingdom of God. You could have a word that glorifies God. <clears throat> excuse me, you could have a word that give thanks to God. Every time you open up, oh God, I give thank you for this beautiful day. God, I give, thank, I give thanks because even though things doesn't look good, you know what? All things are possible with you. All things will work together for my good. Father, even though this woman is sick, I believe that she is healed. Even though, you know, God, this woman on the job, she doesn't like me. Guess what? I will love her because you said to love my enemies. And so this is why you have to know the word. This is why you have to always keep the word in your heart. Like David said, I kept the word in my heart that that I would not sin against you. And this is what he did. And this is what his prayer was to God. Amen. Let us go on. First Timothy 6 and 20. New Living Translation. Timothy. Timothy. Guard what God has entrusted to you. Avoid godless, foolish discussions with those who oppose you with their so-called knowledge. Right? And verse 21 too. Some people have wandered from the faith by following such foolishness. And guess what? I could attest to this. I want to read it again because I want to take my time with this. This is 1 Timothy 6 and 20. He said, Timothy, guard what God has trust entrusted to you. Avoid godless, foolish discussions with those who oppose you with their so-called knowledge. Verse 20, 1 Timothy and verse 21, some people have wandered from the faith by following such foolishness. You have people who are um, followers of Jesus Christ. And what they do, they get in conversation with someone who is of another faith that is not of Jesus Christ. And so because they are not knowledgeable of the word, you know what they do? They sit down and they listen to that person. And you see what the Bible said? So-called knowledge. They let them talk and give them their so-called knowledge. And then what happened in verse 21? Some people have wandered from the faith by following such foolishness. They don't go and ask God if this word is from you. God, if this word is from the word, the holy word. God, is this truly you bringing this to me from the spirit? Or this is from the flesh, from the devil, of the, 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 the father of deception? Because I, I had a young man. He was so full of the word and he, he always come and talk about the word and then he told me that he was switching over and I don't put judgment on any other ministries or any other faith. But guess what? When he began to talk, it sounded like deception. Because when he began to say, oh, I found the truth, I found the truth. Before that, he was so on point with the word, you know, and I could, I could uh, witness it with the spirit of God. But when he began to talk and he allowed others to persuade him, I say, God, what, what has happened? What has happened to him? You can tell that he was deceived. And, you know, this is what the word is saying. I didn't even know that, hey, God is even saying this in his word. He said, some people have wandered from the faith, the real true faith. He said, why? Because they are following foolishness by people who have so-called knowledge. That's right. Go and, go and look at it for yourself. First Timothy 6 and 20, New Living Translation or whatever translation you decide. Let us go on Ephesians 4 and 29. 
Don't use foul or abusive language. Let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. This is the believers I'm talking to right now because guess what? If you are a sinner, God doesn't hold you accountable to anything because why? You haven't chosen him. You're living your own life. You know, and there is a portion for them because why? God gives everyone a choice and he loves them. And so if you are listening to this and you are not a sinner, then I, I urge you to come into the, to, the, to the the family of believers. Come into the kingdom of God right now. <clears throat> Sorry. Come into the kingdom of God where you can get the knowledge, where you can get the wisdom of God. God loves you. And he said in John 3 and 16, he said, for God so loved the world that whosoever believe in him sh um, shall not perish, but have eternal life. And so right now, if anyone who's watching or is not watching, if you are not a, you are not a Christian, what I am saying wouldn't make any sense if you don't know the word. And so this is why it's so important to know the word. Even if you are trying to live a Christian life, even if you are um, um, pursuing a Christian life, but you're not there as yet, guess what? Begin to read the word. In the end, the Bible says the only thing that will last is the word. The word of God, that's the only thing that will last. And that's the only thing you could justify everything that you see going on. The word, you have to have that word hide in your heart because you could be deceived. You could be very much deceived. Just like how he said in 1 Timothy 6 and 21, he said, some people have wandered from the faith by following such foolishness because why? The people come with the so-called knowledge that is not of God and they are persuaded and they go and follow other ways different from Jesus Christ. Amen? So Ephesians 4 and 29, again, don't use foul, foul or abusive language. He said, let everything you say be good and helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Us who are believers, every time your mouth open, you see what he's saying? Go and say, let everything you say be good. Let it be helpful so that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. He said, get away from the Ephesians 4 and 29. The first line said, don't use foul or abusive language. Don't use it. Keep your lips clean. Like the verse we started off, keep your tongue clean from evil and your lips from telling lies. He's just saying pointless, keep your mouth holy, keep it clean, right? Always have good words in your lips, especially if you are a child of God, because you are a child of God. James 3 and 8, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil and full of deadly poison. Let me tell you, before I was saved, I used to gossip. Before I was saved, I would have cussed but I never was a person who really cussed repetitiously. Re I, I never will continuously cuss. Right? Before I was saved, I say whatever I was, oh, look at that big lady, look at that ugly lady, look at that this, that, that, the next thing. And use my mouth for all sorts of foolishness. But when I came into the kingdom of heaven and I saw the word, let me go back to the word. And he said in Matthew 12, 36 and 37, this is when I got a knowledge of God and I get the truth and the guess what? The truth set me free. And it said, I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day for every idle word you speak. The words you say will either quit you or condemn you. But yet so many people who are Christians today, they use them out for everything else except to bless the Lord and except to help others and except to build up the kingdom of God. Many Christians I know who are supposed to be intercessors, they are caught up in gossip. They are caught up in, in jealousy, envy, you know. But speaking, this is what we're talking about today, speaking. And so even as I'm ending this right now, the last verse, the last um, um, verse I had, James 3 and 8, he said, but no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil and full of deadly poison. And so today, if you do not have the spirit of God in you, let me tell you something. That person, what we just talked about in James, will be you. Everything you said, everything you say, will be restless and evil. Because why? You do not have the spirit, so you say anything you want to say. And so even, even, even as Christians, we are, some people are not matured. They say what they want to say. They gossip. They do whatever they feel. But God is saying today, every idle word you speak. I want to put, I want to put the scripture, the, the verse, so y'all could go the, the chapter. Matthew 12, 36 to 37, he said, Every idle word you speak will either acquit you or condemn you. And he's serious about his word. He said, I honor my word above my name. And so today... I want our prayer to be Psalms 143 and 3. 
Ask God to set a guard over your mouth. You know, this is the prayer what I want to pray today. As I am closing and as I am praying, set a guard over our mouth. Psalms 143. Let's, let's pray this every day. Set Psalms 143 and 3. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of these lips. Why? Because James 3 and 8 says, But no one can tame the tongue. It is restless and evil and full of deadly poison. And he said, Matthew again, I want to remind you, 12, 30, and 36 to 37. Matthew 12, 36 to 37. And I tell you this, you must give an account on judgment day to every idle word you speak. Right? The words you say will either acquit you or condemn you. So if you are a person and you stay in gossip and you stay in idle words and you're always in, 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 you're hanging out with worldly people, you're talking politics and you're doing all these things. You see what Matthew 3, 37 says? 36 and 37. Every idle word you speak. And I, I have to reiterate this. Because this is something I was not taught in church. I had to learn this on my own. The Lord had to show me this in, in the word myself. When I began to, to search the scriptures. You will be judged. So watch, out, watch those lips. Watch those, that tongue. Psalm 34 and 13 is my base scripture. My base verse. Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from telling lies. Let me read the last part that I want as a prayer. Let us pray this every day. Psalms 143 and 3. Set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Amen. And that is the end of my um, teaching for today. I just want to pray, you know, and ask the Lord to just um, move over us today. Because guess what? The times are critical. He's coming soon. He's been giving out um, all type of warnings. He's been... Things are happening, as we can see, where he said the signs of the times, and, and we'll know that, hey, he's on the way. They're already there. And so there's hardly nothing left. And so if you are still wasting time as a Christian, I, I want you and I urge you to get about the business of the Lord. And if you are a sinner, I want you to come to, the, to Jesus Christ today. Woman said, and I said, but if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thine heart that God has raised Jesus Christ from the dead, you shall be saved. And he said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever, no matter what, gay, lesbian, adulterer, fornicator, liar, thief, per whoever, pervert, whatever. Whosoever believe in him shall have eternal life. God is love. And don't let, you t don't let nobody tell you that God will not accept you. He'll accept you just as you are. I don't care if you just murder a person. He will accept you as you are if you say, God, I have sinned. Like he did with David in Psalms 51. David said, I have sinned. And David did some good sin. And the Lord forgave him because why? He, was, he had a broken heart and a contrite spirit. He said, if you come broken before me, I, I will not despise you. So I just want to pray. Father God, today in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for every person watching right now. I pray for those who would listen. I pray, oh God, that the spirit of God will begin to move through them like never before. God, do a stirring right now, even as Lord God, you're getting ready to come to the earth. God, when you come, there's not going to be any conversation, Lord. It's just going to be the judgment seat, Father, where you shall sit on the throne as holy of holies, Father, and we shall crown you king. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, we thank you for your presence, God, which is so strong in this place, God. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place today. You are exalted and you are magnified, O oh Father God. I pray today, O oh God, over the mouths of your believers, over the mouths of those who claim Jesus Christ today, God. I pray, put a God over our mouth, God, like the word said, Put a guard over our mouth, set a guard over our mouth. Keep watch over the door of our lips, God, because when you come or call us, Father God, there shall be no questioning. Your word is your word, Father, and if we do not live by that, then condemnation. But if we live by your word, you said we should be acquitted from the condemnation. We should be set free from the condemnation, Father God. We accept the blood of Jesus today. We accept the, the, the cross today, Father. We accept, Lord God, your son, Jesus and therefore, God, you said, Lord God, that you will give us the wisdom that we need. But you said if we lack wisdom in James, let a man ask God. So, Father, those that lack wisdom right now, according to their tongues and their speech, let them ask of the Lord, Father. And you said you will not despise anything that they ask of. And so, Father God, I pray over your children today that they will be awakened in this hour to go out and preach the word, O God, and go out and seek your face, O God, and see what, Lord, you want them to do before it's too late. Father, I pray over this ministry. And I pray, O oh God, that you have approved this. And Father God, there's nothing and no one else can do, Father God, to cause this ministry to die. Because Father God, what you set up, Father, no man should tear down in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And so Father, I declare 
And I decree that no weapon formed against this ministry shall prosper. Father, I thank you that every person shall listen. Father, they shall hear the fruit of your word. I, hear that they, I pray that they will hear truth and that they will not hear me, but they will hear the spirit of God. Father, I decrease that you may increase. And I pray over the Bahamas today. I pray the blood of Jesus over the Bahamas. I pray, oh God, that churches will rise up before, oh God, the judgment of God tries to set place in, in, in these cities, Father, in these towns, in these islands. Let us repent before you, Lord God, from idolatry, Father, every wrong sin that is in these nations, that is in, these, this is the Baha in Bahamas right now. Let us repent, even beginning with the church. Let us repent, Father, there's so much discord. There's so much competition. There's so much idolatry in the church. God, you said you came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. Father, take full control today. We give you full control. God, you are the resurrection, Father. They were looking for resurrection, but God, you said you are the resurrection. So, Father, even every dead situation right now, Father, of anyone listening, I pray the resurrected power upon that dead situation right now. I speak life upon that dead situation right now. Even as we are in the series of the power of the tongue, I speak life over every dead situation. Whether it's healing, whether it's marriage, whether God is finances, whether God is the children on drugs, whether God if they need a job, Father God, whether it's the, it's the house, the mortgage, Father God, anybody, Father, dealing with a, a eviction right now, God, whatever it is, or the situation, needing the vehicle, needing whatever, grocery, whatever it is, you are the God of, of miracles. You are the God of signs and wonders. Philippians 4 19 said that you shall supply for every need. So, Father, we pray right now over healing. We pray right now healing over every person. We pray right now for healing those right now with the COVID suffering in every hospital all over the world, not only in the Bahamas. We pray that your healing power, Father, rests upon them right now, God. Thank you for wisdom. We thank you for knowledge. We thank you, God, that you love us so much that you gave us your word. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. I just want to thank you for joining. For everyone who joined, if you missed the beginning, then you can go back. But I thank you for um, just coming on and just being a part of the work of the Lord. It's not about me, and I never want it to be about me. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ, and he admonished me to just go out and teach the word to his people, and that's what I'm going to do. So I want you to enjoy your day, your week, whatever it is. Know that God is with you. Know that God is working with you and in you, and he's going to do that miracle that you need of. So many are waiting on miracles right now, but guess what? I declare and decree that this week, I know I will testify. I don't know about you, but I didn't declare and decree. We already talk about the power of the tongue. I shall declare and I shall speak and testify in Jesus' name. We praise you. Yes, total healing, Miss Brown. Total healing. You rebuke the devourer of, of, of the devil right now. You rebuke every arrow that was sent against you to destroy you. You declare that you shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. You will testify that the Lord is the God of, the heal, of, of, of healing. We thank you right now. Even as the power of God is moving, I declare and decree that you are healed. You rebuke all of those chains that the enemy has placed on you. Every arrow that has been sent, you send it back to the pits of hell. We declare and decree that the blood of Jesus, because it was shed, you are healed. I don't even have a doubt that you are healed. If you believe that you are healed, I believe you are healed. Do you believe that you are healed? You have to believe that he said, be it unto you according to your faith. He said, will thou be made whole? Will thou be made whole? Will thou be made whole? You looking at it and you say it's impossible, but guess what God say, I've already done it. With man, it's impossible, but with him, all things are possible. We declare the resurrected power over your body right now. The resurrected power that raised Lazarus from the dead, we declare that over. We send that to you right now. Just as he send that power to the centurion, you may be on this live, but guess what? I send that word of healing. I send the power of healing to you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, your enemy's mouth shall drop. Your enemy's mouth shall, they, they should be in awe. They should say, what happened? We thought we, we should have killed her. She should have died, whatever we sent. But guess what? The Lord said, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper because the Lord knows that you love the Lord. The devil knows that you love the Lord. He wants to take you up, but guess what? You shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. I can tell you, I was hit with witchcraft twice. And look at this face. I tell you, I look like I don't know what it was the first time. They touched my face and then they touched my reproductive area, two different people. And I can tell you, I stand in here today. I am a product of a healing from witchcraft. Twice. And I am healed today. I'm standing here. I tell you, I couldn't even sleep. The first attack years ago, I'll never forget it, but I have forgiven 
I had to forgive the person I had to go to them because the Lord showed me in a dream. And I had to forgive them. But I am I am I am good today. I am good. If I would show you a old picture of how I did look. You'd be like, wow. You know? But God is good, God is able, God is able. And this is why, <clears throat> excuse me, he allowed me to go through it. Guess what? So I can tell you that he's able to deliver you from anything. And this is why he hates witchcraft. Because guess what? People use that as God. People use that to attack people. Because why? They hate people. They're jealous. They're envious. Because why? They believe that these things will work for their favor. But guess what? It works against them. They don't even know. It works against them and it works against their children. God said I would visit the third and the fourth generation. And guess what? He's showing me even now. Where the people now are suffering for the sin that they have done to me. But guess what? I don't rejoice. I give glory to the Lord because guess what? When God was on the cross, you know what he said? Forgive them for they know not what they do. They took me to another level like they did when, when the Satan came in the wilderness. And guess what? He thought that he was tempting Jesus and he thought he wanted to bring him down. But at the end, look where he was on the top of the mountain. And that's where I am today. I bless the Lord that I could look in my enemy's face and I would give them food. I could give them water. Whatever it is, I'll give it to them. Because why? I must make it in the end. In that judgment day, guess what? Ivy can be standing up there. And he, she can hear, well done. So don't worry about it. You will heal. I declare that you will heal. By the power of God, you will heal. And you will come back and you will testify and you will tell me. And so I just want to say thank you, you know, to all of you who are watching. I pray that, you know, I'm asking God to just um, do, a, I want to do a live where I can do like prayers for people who just need simple prayers, who need healing, who need deliverance, who need um, anything in their life. Because so many people are going through right now and they need the power of God to move in their life to break yokes and chains and generation curses and all these different things. And I know that I'm called to deliverance ministry. And like I said, the two attacks was only to prepare me. And so that's why I could tell you, it's only to prepare you, it's only to prepare you for your ministry. And I'm praying that that ministry is going to come one day. And so I just pray a blessing over you. I thank you for those who are watching. And yes, just love your enemies, Miss Brown. Love them. That's all the Lord say. Love them. Vengeance is his, his, said the Lord. So I want to say thank you today. And you all have a great weekend. I bless you and I bless the Lord. In Jesus' name, have a good day.